Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 91 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a proximal circumflex CTO. The patient had previous coronary bypass graft surgery and was referred for PCI of an osteal circumflex CTO. There was no proximal cap, it was an ambiguous proximal cap with smooth continuation of the vessel past the origin of the circumflex. However, the circumflex itself was a large, good quality vessel, and the occlusion was short, approximately 10 millimeters. There was a bifurcation at the distal cap between the first OM, which is the larger branch, and the distal circumflex. And the filling of the OM and the circumflex was through epicardial collaterals that did not appear to be suitable for the retrograde approach, therefore they were non-interventional. The plan was to try with undergrade wire escalation, given that it's a short occlusion and we can see clearly what the distal vessel is, followed by undergrade dissection re-entry if the initial approach failed. Of course, that would have been a little more challenging because there appeared to be a previously placed stent into the osteal circumflex. Osteal circumflex CTOs can be challenging, in large part because of the significant tortuosity. Such lesions can originate at 90 or even more than 90 degree angle, as was the example in this case. And the problem is when wires are attempted to be advanced through these significant bends, they tend to prolapse into the LAD or the rheums. Having a microcatheter that is angled and can provide good support can be extremely useful in recanalizing these occlusions. And one such catheter has traditionally been the venture catheter, which has a deflection knob on the proximal part. This is turned clockwise, and when clockwise rotation is performed, the tip can bend up to 90 degrees. It is also a fairly stiff microcatheter that provides very strong support, but at the same time can cause injury of the vessel if it's moved uh, through the vessel tortuosity. Unfortunately, the venture as of 2017 is on recall. However, there are some other options for angled microcatheters, such as the supercross, which comes uh, with pre-shaped angles between 45 and 120 degrees. Uh, the supercross has a radio opaque tip and can essentially provide similar support to the venture catheter, although this is not an adjustable angle, but rather it's a pre preformed, pre shaped angle. A third option, apart from the venture and the supercross, is to use a dual lumen microcatheter, such as a twin pass torque. The dual lumen microcatheter is advanced over a guide wire into the main vessel, advancing the side Brand, the signed port lumen close to the origin of the vessel, in this particular case, the circumflex. And then by having the support of the wire in the main branch, one can push and advance wires through the area of the occlusion. In the case of the twin pass torque, there's a 10 degree angulation of the side port. In this particular case, since we did not have the venture catheter, we decided to use a supercross, which was advanced uh, with um, a workhorse guide wire. Then the workhorse was removed and the Gaia third was inserted. And the Gaia third did catch through some part of the proximal cap. And then upon advancement, the wire did advance along what appeared to be the course of the circumflex. One can see that once we push, there's some um, attempt for the microcatheter to be deformed, but eventually keeps its shape, and then it provides enough support for the guide wire to be advanced through the area of the occlusion. Of course, before we do anything, the first step is to confirm that the wire is where we think it is, either into the distal true lumen or within the vessel architecture. So we do an injection, and in this particular case, there were no contralateral collaterals, so the whole case was done through a single uh, 8 friends 375 EBU guide catheter. The wire does seem to be within the true lumen or definitely within the vessel architecture. It was confirmed on contralateral view that it was in the true lumen. 
The wire was changed for a soft workhorse guide wire, followed by predilatation of the lesion, and uh, that restored TME3 flow into the obtuse marginal as well as the distal circumflex. A stent was placed all the way from the left main ostium into the circumflex. This was done maintaining a wire into the LAD just as a precaution in case there was some uh, plug shift or some compromise of the LAD ostium. There was some anterior expansion at the area of the previously placed stent that required high pressure post dilatation, which caused pinching of the ostium of the distal circumflex. So before we went even higher pressure, we wanted to secure access to that vessel. And once again, we used the supercross 90 degree microcatheter that was advanced within um, the stand that was essentially placed into the obtuse marginal branch. And then through the uh, supercross, we're able to advance various guide wires. This is a fighter polymer jacketed taper tip guide wire that um, eventually found its way into the distal circumflex. After doing that and maintaining access in the vessel, we felt much more secure in having high pressure inflations into the circumflex stand, which would be at less risk of causing compromise of the distal circumflex. After doing that, there was no need actually to do any balloon dilatations in the distal circumflex, and there was an excellent result with TM3 flow into this large obtuse marginal branch, but preserve flow into the distal circumflex as well. Less than two hours procedure time, 14 minutes of fluor time, 1.8 gray air kerma radiation dose, and 194 mL of contrast. This case shows some uh, important facts regarding ostal circumflex CTOs. The first one is that angulation is one of the key factors that need to be overcome. And one way to do this is by using an angled microcatheter, such as the Venture, the Supercross, 90 degree, one, the one was used in this particular case, or alternatively, a dual lumen microcatheter, such as the Twin Pass Torque, could be used. Undergrade crossing is particularly important for osteal circumflex CTOs because retrograde is often not an option because the patient's collaterals are not conducive to the retrograde approach. Therefore, having those microcatheters and having experience using them can be very useful for recanalizing osteal circumflex CTOs. Thank you.